Wake up. It's Brian and Tracy. Thomas Rhett right there, beautiful as you. I I saw this story, Tracy. I was just shaking my head. What? A lot of legal experts are saying, yeah, right, to this story. Hmm. A man named Jeffrey Piccolo is suing Disney after his wife died from a meal she ate at Disney World last year. She had a severe nut and dairy allergy, and the staff uh, and the staff at the Irish Pub in Disney Springs uh, said that her order was safe, but it actually wasn't. So uh, the uh, Jeffrey filed a lawsuit, but now Disney is claiming that he can't sue them because he signed up for the Disney Plus trial membership back in 2019. Mm. The fine print when you sign up says. Any disputes with Disney must be resolved in arbitration, not in court. So they're trying to say that anyone with Disney Plus subscription can't sue Disney for anything. Ooh. Actually, Jeffrey also bought tickets to Epcot through their website, and they claim the terms and conditions would nullify that lawsuit as well. Well, Jeffrey's lawyers are saying it's absurd. And they say even though those agreements were universally binding, they, would, they, they wouldn't extend to his wife since he's the one who paid. Ooh. So it's not clear on the, how much he's going to sue for. Uh, we know it's going to be in excess of 50 grand, but uh, probably a lot more. Both sides will present their cases. The court hearing is coming up on October the 2nd. That's my birthday. Well, happy birthday. The KSAM Wake Up Morning Show. And as we head over to our hometown happenings page at KSAM1017.com, a time to read will conduct The Gathering. It's the annual training event for all of its volunteers, and that will be happening on Monday, August 26th, from 5 to 8 p.m. over at University Heights Baptist in Huntsville. Yeah, returning and new volunteers serving Huntsville ISD school children for the 2024-25 school year, they are encouraged to participate. Mm -hmm. And A Time to Read is a nonprofit partnership with public schools that helps second grade students enter the third grade reading on grade level. Yep. If you'd like some more information about uh, participating, they're a great group. Get over to our hometown happenings page, ksam1017.com. Our community spotlight brought to you by Wiesner of Huntsville. The KSAM Wake Up Morning Show. Yeah. Justin Moore, and this is my dirt on 101.7 KSAM, your hometown radio station. Yeah, so uh, we're continuing to uh, shift around and cover all the air shifts this week while Big mm-hmm. Glenn Edwards is out with family. So uh, Tracy and I are going to stay right here until 12 noon. And then uh, at 12 noon, of course, we'll have news with Larry Crippen. Carlos will come in and take you through the rest of the afternoon. Um, there is a poll that just came out recently about ice cream. Which and, I it, love. and it said 70% of people say they prefer soft serve ice cream over hard ice cream. Agreed. And that it can be a little healthier, I guess, because so soft serve usually has a little more milk fat in it mm-hmm. or something. So, um, but I like I like it both ways. Do you? I, I like soft serve if I'm in a hurry. Uh huh. But but whenever I make homemade ice cream, uh huh, we will then uh, as soon as it's done churning, mm-hmm. we'll then pour it into some containers that I have. And I fill them right up to the top so that when I push the lid down, there's no air. Okay. All right. And then it goes straight into the deep freezer. Oh, very nice. I made ice cream with oat milk last year. It turned out really, really good with the fresh fruit. I got oat milk. Uh, oat milk. Don't oat knock milk. it. It's good. Sounds Try it disgusting. with the oat Disgusting. No, it's good. And then you just put the cream with it. Mm, I don't know. All right. Well, here's a fun fact. In some parts of Europe, they don't call it soft serve. They call it American ice cream. <laughs> In Greece and Romania, they call it the machine ice cream. And in Ireland, they call it soft whip. Soft whip. Soft whip. I I, I, I can see that. It's Alabama and born country on your hometown radio station. 101.7K, Sam. Hello, I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Your Southeast Texas weather forecast is on the way. Carlene Carter, along with Mary Chapin Carpenter, is on the way here in just a few moments. And it's time for a food story. Well, you get a dessert story this hour. If you didn't know, today is National Soft Serve Ice Cream Day. And while everything can probably be made into soft serve, most Americans would probably prefer vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry. Or a twist at that. In one poll, 70% of people said they prefer soft serve ice soft serve ice cream over hard ice cream. And it can be a little healthier, too. Soft serve usually has 3-6% to 6% milk fat, while regular ice cream is more likely to have between 10% and 18%. Here's a fun fact. In some parts of Europe, it isn't called soft serve. It's called 
American ice cream. In Greece and Romania, it's called machine ice cream. And in Ireland, it's called soft whip. Hmm. Speaking of other countries, there's a new map out that shows the favorite ice cream flavor of almost every country. And here are some of the highlights of that. Neapolitan, the vanilla chocolate strawberry, number one here in America, along with Canada, Mexico, and most of Central America, England, and in Australia, too. Some big countries have flavors that are less common in the United States. The top flavor in China and Japan, matcha. In Brazil, it's pistachio. And in Argentina, it's dulce de leche. In Saudi Arabia, it's mango flavored. They don't have word on ice cream preferences in Russia, Ukraine, Iran, and Cuba, and a handful of other countries as well. But there were some strange picks too. Bolivia loves cinnamon ice cream. Chile loves pineapple ice cream. Ethiopians are into maple walnut. I think that'd be more about Canada, but I digress. Indonesians love fig ice cream, and New Zealand loves hokey pokey ice cream, which is vanilla with lumps of honeycomb toffee. Hmm, interesting. Joe Diffie propped me up beside the jukebox on 101.7 KSAM, your hometown radio station. Good afternoon, Carlos Zimmerman hanging out with you on this Thursday. Your weather forecast is on the way. Some Garth Brooks and Winona still to come as well. Well, guys, it's time to break out those flannels and start Googling corn mazes because fall is here in a very unofficial way. The weather doesn't say that, but this does. The pumpkin spice latte returns to Starbucks today. The earliest they've ever brought it back. A full month before fall really starts on September the 22nd. Pumpkin Spice Latte returned on August 24th last year, which tied the previous record for earliest debut, so they bumped it up an extra two days. And if you were thinking of slipping a little something extra into your coffee today, here's your excuse. The Pumpkin Spice Latte turns 21 this year, debuted back in 2003. Their fall menu also has one new drink with a needlessly long name, the Iced Apple Crisp Non-Dairy Cream Chai. They also have a raccoon cake pop, whatever that is. Everything else that they have is a returning item. But oh boy, it's here. Too darn early. Lori Morgan and what part of no on 101.7 KSAM. I'm Carlos Zimmerman here hanging out with you in your lunch hour. Your weather forecast on the way, Vince Gill and Reba. Also coming up in just a few moments. Here's a coffee story for you. And if Folgers isn't cutting it, maybe sell a kidney and stock up on this. I'm not being serious. Anyway, some very fancy coffee beans just sold at an auction for a new world record of $4,542 a pound. Hmm. A company called Lamastis Family Estates grew them in Panama. They managed to top their own record set last year, beating it by just five bucks. Their beans are grown at high elevation on the side of a volcano. They're described as having notes of jasmine, mandarin, and lychee in them. Most of the beans were brought by a coffee, or bought rather, by a coffee seller in Japan, but a few high-end coffee shops here in the U.S. could end up getting their hands on some, too. It's not clear how much plan they plan to sell it for, but be ready to spend hundreds of dollars for a single cup. Or just stick to your regular cup of joe every day. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I don't tell you how to live your life. Just I'm just here to tell you about what other things are going on. Okay? So don't blame me. <laughs> 